the Manawatu River. It was dubbed in the media as the dirtiest river in the Southern Hemisphere. The plants mature, the roots mature, the biofilm matures. The system just keeps getting better and better and better. Welcome to New Zealand. I'm very pleased to see you all and let's make this time interactive and, and, and as productive as we can. Okay, this, this, this um, is our first site and this is our most mature, our oldest wastewater treatment plant of, of this size. And it's, it's a single pond and you can see it's sort of over the years it's been baffled. In, in, in the centre, first there's was an asbestos sort of a wall running through that failed. Then they, you see the floats, they tried to put another um, sort of a, a baffle through to separate the pond into two, two different um, treatment zones. So you've got your, your maturation and your, and your facultative zones. Now, part of the reason why we're here is, um, and, and in this area, where well, we crossed, crossed a river back there called the Manawatu River. Now, two years ago, three years ago, that was dubbed in the media as the dirtiest river in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, living in New Zealand, we we believe that we're, we're clean and green and 100% pure and all those sorts of things. So everybody's hands went up and it was, um, it was on, on the front page for, for weeks and in, in the papers, still in the papers. And um, in the background to that, the, the regional council in this area is called Horizons Regional Council. And they set new limits, which we're going to learn about tonight. And the, the discharge limits were focused around nutrients. And it was called the One Plan. Well, when the One Plan came out, everybody threw up their hands again and said, this is impossible, we can't do this. And, and mainly in these types of applications, and they said, how on earth are we gonna you know, upgrade these, like a pond system here for a town of 2,000, uh, probably 30% of the town in Shannon is renting, and the rate, the rate take is poor, um, we can't put a mechanical treatment plant here and expect them to pay for it. So from there, I guess we started working with um, some of these councils and coming up with some, some options. The council at the time purchased all this land out behind us and they were going to build a large constructed wetland in there. And we said, there's another option, you could retrofit a floating treatment wetlands or floating treatment media to the, to the back half of your, um, or back one third of your pond. Now our first design um, had this system over against that asbestos wall. So it would come in, it comes in at the far end, there's a hole in the curtain, you see the blue baffle, impermeable baffle here that runs all the way down, so it comes in at the far end and it makes its way all the way down through here into the outlet. Now, in our, in our earlier designs, we felt that that was um, you know, where, where it should be situated. We were wrong. Um, and since we've, um, like last year, we, we've actually moved this and relocated it at the final end of the pond. Because what we were getting was, um, we were getting the treatment, the nutrient reduction, but then in, in, there was a, like a final lane which was showing on your drawings there. It's not quite, uh, that's where we originally had it situated. Um, the algae would re regrow um, to, to quite an extent in this last portion coming down and we would have our, our TSS limits, we weren't meeting our TSS limits. This system is also stage one of, um, of, of, our, of the upgrade when, when we're talking nutrients. If we wanted to get ammonia reduction we need to include ox oxygen into the system somehow and, and, and that should be um, earlier in the system to, to, to get our nitrification. So we're not getting um, a total nitrogen reduction lower than the ammonia level. So our denitrification here is probably about 10 days of re residence time in this final portion. So that's a long time of um, anoxia so we, we don't get any, any ammonia reduction at, at, in, in, this, in this design. Um, and we get phosphorus, total phosphorus um, removal and our TSS and BOD limits are reduced um, substantially as well. But this being one of our first designs um, it's been operating here for over five years. It's had five times, uh, it's had 20, 20 harvesting programs run over it. So we, we run through. So what I might do is um, if we just have a bit of a walk around the system and I'll explain um, you know, as, as we go around just, just, just how the system's working and you can have a good look at it. Uh, this is one of our earlier designs and um, we created um, like cells, if you like. Um, in, in the summertime, we get... Um, we get duckweed and azolla will grow in there. It occurs naturally, it turns up, uh, probably turns up on the birds, but um, it has no detrimental effect and we'll just let it look after itself over winter. It gets quite cold down here in the winter time and then we'll harvest it again in sort of October, November. These anchors here are what we call um, bollard anchors. 
Uh, we don't use that design anymore. Less trip hazards, easier for the maintenance guys when they're mowing around. But that's, that there is called Deadly Nightshade, and that would have been brought in by a pheasant or something like that. So this one here is Carrix, and then in, the taller one is called Shunaplectus. It just offers a range and a diversity. It's got a slightly longer root system than the Carrix, but not quite as dense and as fibrous. What you're looking at really is almost like an optical illusion. Um, what's doing the, the, the work, the treatment, is what's underneath. It's that, it's that root column that's hanging out and, um, within, that, within that water body. It's growing biofilms, so you've got your, got your biofilms growing on the roots. Not only the, 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 the surface area of the roots is, is um, enormous, but they also have that advantage over geosynthetic type of media or plastic, or, is that they can, they can provide that sugar and that oxygen. We haven't had a system that is adversely affected by pests on, on a wastewater treatment system. Yeah, we don't have turtles here, and turtles are, are, are destructive when it comes to the roots. There's a, there's a curtain hanging to the base. Um, it, it's permeable, but it's also got slits at the top, so the, the, the water has to come up and through the roots. It's made of a non-woven matrix. So the roots get out and into the non-woven matrix, the shoots get out and bind itself in, and it's pretty resilient. With turtles, we would hang a net at the back as well as at the front, so the turtles can't actually get in. And, and the other thing that we're finding with these systems, and, and um, had, it, had it verified as well with um, similar technologies, as these systems grow and mature, um, Obviously, we put all the harvested material into the middle of the, where the walkways are, these maintenance walkways. And that all rots down and provides a carbon source, and it, and, it, and it rots down like a humus. The plants mature, the roots mature, the biofilm matures. The system just keeps getting better and better and better. So what we designed for in, in our first 12 months to get you into, um, through the commissioning stage and into compliance, um, we also know that as, as time goes on, you're going to get another 5% increase, 3% increase um, as, as, the, um, as, as the system matures. And um, if you're asking for a process guarantee uh, for our removal rates, well, of course, there's going to be an extra buffer in there as well, um, like any, anyone that's going to, um, to design a system with, um, with guarantees on it, they're going to guarantee for that, um, you know, for the worst case scenario. So it's, a, it's, still, a, it's still a low tech system. The operators here, they still operate the aerators. They've got a pre-screen up the front. For the first 12 months, we, we put the system in, we maintain it, we look after it, uh, make sure the plant, the plant health is, is, um, is up and running, we've got the coverage, um, the wire ropes sometimes need retentioning, um, if we've got an impermeable baffle, make sure there's no short circuiting, that type of thing. And then we offer a 5 plus 5 maintenance regime where our team comes in, does the main maintenance, it, it just keeps, keeps the um, plant in shape. I think every single council so far has, has opted for that because they haven't had to change their, 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 their maintenance crew haven't had to change the way they operate. We come in quarterly, uh, do, that, do that work, put a report back to council. Um, for them, they don't have to employ an extra one and a half people, um, which often is the case when you get something, um, a new, new addition like that. So their, their operating costs haven't, haven't really gone up. This, this, this plant here is operating at about $27 a day, I think it is. They, they've still got a wee way to go here. Um, they've got to fix up their phosphorus. And they're going to have to do that with alum dosing. Because we'll only do 60% of your phosphorus. We could do more, but there's no way I'm going to guarantee more than 60%. Question about the anaerobic activity releasing phosphorus. Let's say with this, this pond was far too big and the, and the system's over design. We get a hot, windy week. If that is, is going to be the case every year, um, and not just a drought every 20 years, put a recirculating pump down there, put a solar panel up, and pump back up the start of the system. And we assume that as the, as the nutrient increases, the bugs within the system expand to, to cope with that nutrient. But potentially the amount of phosphorus that's in a plant is not a lot. Um, the amount of nitrogen that's locked up in these plants per annum is not a lot. For the, for the tons that come through here every year, um, if, we, if, we, if, it was, if it was a straight hydroponic plant uptake removal type system, these would have to be willows or poplar trees. So do you just harvest the top? Just harvest the top. Do you Don't, harvest the root mass? No, no, no. Um, good question. So you have shoot growth and you promote root growth. So you harvest the system, gives a bit of a burst of growth, and the roots, they'll, they'll give a bit of a burst of growth to, to, to keep up with it, and it just keeps the system in full health all of the time. Right, so how old is this system here? This is five.